Hey guys, if you love to hunt and fish, you've come to the right spot. I'm Justin Geike, and this is Chase Outdoors, the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me, as always. If you've been listening to our podcast since last fall, this is episode 15 or 16, and I haven't done one for a long time, and I'm sorry. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then this is the first time you've seen us because this is the first time I've recorded to put it onto the YouTube platform. So welcome and thank you for joining me. Um, to give you some feedback for those of you that haven't participated in the podcast before, I'm Justin Geike and I'm the owner of Chase Outdoors, which is an online and storefront uh, retailer for all things hunting, shooting, and fishing. In addition to that, I've been a 21-year uh, veteran as a fishing and hunting guide. So I just am here because I love to share my passion and some of the background stories and the other guests that we've had on here and just try to encourage you to get out and participate in the sports of hunting, fishing, and shooting. And uh, hopefully some of my rambling or some of my guests talking uh, can help educate you or inspire you in some way, shape, or form. Now, if you're seeing me here, I'm sitting in the Chase Outdoors man cave right now. Uh, moving forward, we're actually working on putting together a studio and getting some lighting in there right now. To, that will be where we do our, our YouTube videos here moving forward. And I'm really excited about that because I've got some good guests lined up uh, for future episodes here in the near future. For those of you who've been listening to the podcast, whether it's on iTunes, Google Play, or Podbean, I'm really sorry that I haven't done one in the last couple months. Um, I have been doing them every week uh, pretty religiously. And uh, why haven't I done a podcast? I mean, you know, I just, I don't really have a great answer for that. Uh, COVID has kind of put me, like everybody, in a position where we were focused on so many different things. And, and for me, it was learning to focus on less. Um, I needed to pour all of my energy and all my focus into a number of different things. And first and foremost, above anything, it was making sure that I was doing my due diligence as a husband and father. Um, I really wanted to make sure that I took an opportunity uh, to be a, a strong leader in my household, uh, to make sure that my, my wife and son had everything that they needed in my attention. Uh, and we've done a lot of really cool things in the last couple of months, and it's been so good for our family. Um, whether it's hiking and biking, um, running, uh, did a couple five Ks. I'm getting back in, back into shape. Um, COVID was starting out, coming out of a rough winter, man. I packed a few LBs on, I ain't going to lie, but, um, fall hunting's coming up and we've got a trip planned out West Wyoming. So it's time for me to start, uh, taking things a little bit more seriously. And, uh, we've been doing a lot of outdoor physical activities, the hunting or hunting, Hiking, biking, uh, and, and running has been awesome. My wife's been doing it a lot. In fact, she's down in Devil's Lake State Park right now hiking with friends. Uh, and I just got done guiding, so I had a little bit of free time and kind of wanted to get back uh, on on the microphone and talk to you guys some. Um, I, I think that uh, part of the, the absence was... Uh, related to obviously, like I had mentioned, the at home stuff. But the other thing too was just uh, we've been just so crazy busy in the shop. I mean, crazy. Um, Chase Outdoors, you know, we're in the Cedar Creek Mall uh, here in Rothschild. And I mean, every facet of our business has seen a, a large spike in increase in business, as has guiding once we were able to go and do it again back uh, at the end of May. Um, it was tough for so many of my friends who are full-time guides not being able to work and just so grateful that, that they're able to work again and that uh, myself, uh, all of those guys have been so busy. My schedule's been basically packed. And just that general, you know, even though I'm doing so much fewer things because so much stuff has been canceled, uh, I've been doing a lot more of the fewer things that I have been doing. So I'm excited to get back into a normal rhythm here with the podcast. It's been great. I've enjoyed doing it so much. I'm grateful to every one of you who have watched and who have listened. And I'm looking forward to getting the studio done and getting our lighting right, which is just right around the corner here, and uh, start bringing some of our guests and having some more fun dialogue. Um, obviously, with the two- to three-month absence, there's so many different things that I could talk about, um, and especially with everything that's going on between COVID and riots and stuff in the store. But I think we've talked about COVID enough, haven't we? Like, Facebook has done enough. I've, I haven't quite pulled the plug entirely from there, but I, like so many of you, are just sick of it. Like, sick of it. Like, 
if we if we focus on the world that's in front of us and the people that are in front of us in reality you know that that sits right in front of us you know the people that can we can actually connect with i think would be great um it's just so much better it it really is so let's talk about hunting and let's talk about fishing one of the good things and the positives that's come out of covid it was so many other types of things canceled participation in hunting fishing and shooting is through the roof and that's really good for you and for me as hunters and fishermen because the more participation that we have and the things that we love to do the more people involved the more equipment that's purchased the more you know participation people out there doing it the stronger voice we have to protect defend and grow what's important to us and obviously i'm super passionate about hunting fishing and shooting that's why i'm doing the podcast and sharing that with you so these are really exciting times for me you know being a retailer obviously the store's been busy not just our categories, but anything outdoor related, biking, uh, pools, camping equipment, all that stuff, uh, you know, nationwide has seen a monstrous, monstrous increase. And I'm sure you guys have dealt with some of those supply chain uh, issues yourself, just like the shortage on monofilament fishing line. Whoever thought a virus would make six pound monofilament disappear in my shop and everyone else's in the country. It's just crazy. But that's a really positive sign because it's a sign of so many people getting out there and using it. So I think it's something to celebrate. I think it's something to be excited about. And uh, I think that we're going to see that same thing moving forward in the fall hunting. And, and I've already seen it in the store. There's so many new people coming in and getting set up with their first bow. And not just kids, but but I've seen a lot of a lot of 20-year-olds um, who have maybe hunted or fished with their dad. but um, have only rifle hunted and now they're wanting to get into it themselves. I think the, the shortage of, of, of meat in that conversation had a lot of people thinking. And while I kind of said, I definitely said, I didn't want to beat on the negatives of COVID. Some of the negatives are what are creating the positives that we're dealing with right now. I mean, how many people have seen the, the issue in obtaining the stuff that's in the store? It started to find avenues where they could go and get it themselves. And that's where part fishing participation has been up. I think that's where this hunting participation is coming from. There's so many things that have been canceled, events that have been canceled, trips that have been canceled. And people are looking for hobbies and entertainment and, and providing for themselves and becoming independent in a lot of different ways, whether it's from growing your own gardens, hunting your own food, catching your own fish. And that just making makes things better for everybody, for everybody. And uh, it, it, it's so many ways it seems like we've returned back. A lot of the noise and the distractions of American life has tamed things down. And it's been great. I mean, it's been great for hunting and fishing. So for that, I'm really grateful for all the stuff that's gone on. As far as me, I want to talk about some of the things that have been going on. Um, Obviously, store's been very busy, huge participation in turkey hunting this spring, more than I've ever seen, fishing participation, we've talked about hunting. That's all great. It is creating some supply chain issues, um, finding things like ammunition, firearms, uh, monofilament line, there's a ton. I mean, arrows are going to be an issue for a lot of companies. Anything that's imported out of China, we're starting to see huge uh, challenges with that, and I think it's bringing a lot of people to American made good. So just positive, positive, positive in so many different ways, even though the negative's there. I'm not ignoring it and I'm not trying to knock it down a level. Um, but um, there is there is definitely some, there are definitely some positives that come out of it. Fishing has been really good. Uh, really, really good for a lot of different people doing a lot of different things. Um, and I just want to talk about a lot of what's going on right now. Uh, one of the things that's going on is here in Wisconsin on Lake Michigan, we're having one of the best salmon fishing years that we've ever had. Uh, my friends like Captain uh, Adam Rasmussen and some of the other captains over there that I know, some friends with boats like Keith Carlin from Smith & Wesson, having just monster years, not only good numbers, but the quality has been through the roof. 25 to 30 pounders have been pretty common, and I think we're going to see those weights even stack and get above that here coming up real shortly. So if you've never been salmon fishing before, now is a really, really good time to do that, to call up some of those guys like Adam and uh, get out there and try to try to see if you can get onto their schedule. Obviously, guides have been really, really busy. Um, Green Bay, as far as walleye fishing goes, 
kind of had a struggle there for a while. Guys were struggling to catch big enough fish to keep. They were catching a lot of shorts. That's starting to shift and change. Some of these bigger walleyes are starting to show up. Guys like Captain Brett Jolly are having some really, really, really good outings for walleyes over there too. Um, bass fishing has been really weird this year for me and a lot of the other guys that I've talked to. And we have some really high water here in Wisconsin right now. The body of water that uh, my, my best friend Brian's property is on, uh, most of the docks are underneath water. They're begging people to not wake because there's cabins and boathouses that historically have been two to three feet above the water line and close to shore. These, these old places that have been grandfathered in, they're underwater. Um, and, and that's crazy. We've had a lot of rainfall um, and we've had a lot of heat. So we also have really high water temperatures. So it's created a different um, scenario than we've normally had with high water temperatures. Generally on a normal year where water levels have been normal through the 90s and the 2000s and stuff like that, when we had that fast, rapid growth in, in warm water, those fish moved out to summer patterns really fast and really early. Here we are, it's July 15th. The water temperatures are there. They're as hot as you see them around here, eight, high 80s for a while. That's since cooled down because of some storms we've had. But last week, my family and I rented a cabin on Lake Alice in Tomahawk, and uh, bluegills were still on their beds. And that's something that's a month behind where I commonly see them. I still saw some with eggs in them, and that's unheard of. Usually for me, once the largemouth bass spawn is done, those fish move pretty quickly off that shallow stuff and move out to deep grass and deep weeds and deep milfoil. Um, that bite hasn't materialized up until the last week or so. Uh, so the high water levels are definitely having an impact on seasonal patterns, but the fishing's still good. We just have to make adjustments into the how and why we're doing the things that we are. I think we're just about over this weird hump and we're going to be dealing with normal summer patterns moving forward. But with this late come to summer pattern fruition, one thing that it's done is, is it continued and maintained walleye fishing to be very, very good still. Um, some of the guides that I know, guys up north like Jeff Van Remortal, uh, Rob Manthai, some of those guys cool the jets on musky fishing when water temperatures get up in the 80s. And it's because they care about the future of the resource and those high water temperatures we're talking about catch and release fishing and muskies is really, really hard on them. Um, I, I don't musky fish during those times either, and we're starting to see more and more people do that, which is just one of the progressions where I think in so many different ways, not only is fishing getting better in certain areas, but we as anglers are getting more responsible. And with the increase in quality in electronics and equipment and boats and the increasing number of fishermen that we're seeing, we have to be really good stewards of the resource to maintain the quality of the fishery that we have so that it doesn't slide backwards. And we're going to have to do even more if we want to see those fisheries improve. And I think that moving forward in the future, we'll start seeing a lot more restrictive regulations on harvest. And I've got to be honest with you, in so many ways, I'm in favor of it. And I think the majority of anglers are too. We want to see fisheries be at their best. And I think the Minocqua chain is one of the best indications of, of that that we've seen in a long time. Walleye fishing historically had always been very, very good out there. And they put a moratorium on harvest because numbers got so bad. They, the, the natives agreed to stop spearing it. We uh, have no, no uh, harvesting of walleyes as, as uh, rod and reel anglers. And, and now what we're seeing on Lake Minocqua is a fishery that's full of really nice fish. I wouldn't have told you that two years ago because it was a really well kept secret. But the cat's out of the bag now. I'm not. Uh, I'm not advertising anything new. But I'm so grateful that they went and and extended that so we can continue that. And and I'm definitely an advocate of saying, hey, if if you can come up to a body of water, whether you're a vacationer coming up from Chicago or just somebody who's avid about trophy fishing and have the opportunity to catch world-class or, 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 or replica mount quality fisheries, why don't we start doing some more of this restrictive regulations, whether it's complete catch and release or more limited harvest, because there's plenty of places that we can still manage and manipulate things so that if a person wants to keep a meal of fish or two, that they still have the freedom to do so. 
So I'm, I'm excited. I, I really am. I, I think that uh, there's a lot of good fishing left, obviously, um, before we get into the fall. But you know as well as I do, once hunting season comes along, man, it's hard to pick that fishing rod up too much after that. And I think that we're going to see a ton of hunting participation. We've seen it in the shop already. So many people coming in and buying their first bow, not just kids, but adults. And, and, and thank you so much to the manufacturers and engineers in the archery industry who are making it so easy by making these bows that are so adjustable so that you can buy a bow for your kid at five and they can shoot it at 12 and buy it for them at 12 and they can shoot it till into being an adult. Um, I think that's awesome. And, uh, we're definitely seeing a lot of that happening right now. And I think that's just, again, it's good for everybody. We want participants. We want advocates for our sport so we have voices and votes for the future to, to, to defend and protect what we're doing. Um, but uh, some of the tactics, um, back to the fishing thing that we're seeing, I talked about bass transitioning to uh, summer patterns. And what I mean by that is, is there is a shallow water bite and there is a deep water bite. As far as the shallow water bite, a lot of fish moving up into docks and shoreline cover, shaded areas, looking to get out of the sun. Um, we're doing stuff like a weightless trick stick, and I really like secret weapons. He's a local guy here in Cronowitter that hand pours them. They don't have salt in them. Now, I love Sankos for, for my standard Sanko style of fishing. But talking about skipping docks, when you have that, that trick stick without salt in it, it just doesn't disintegrate as fast. So what that does is it makes it more durable as far as being able to hard skip it way up underneath those docks. And you don't really need that Senko fall rate when we're talking about skipping baits up underneath docks into one or two feet of water. It's not nearly as important. Um, in addition to that, frog fishing is, is phenomenal. It's one of my favorite things to do. The weeds have grown really, really well. There's a great frog bite still available. Um, but that deep water bass bite is definitely one of my favorites. Using a yeah, half ounce, like Super K, K plunk jig with a with a craw trailer on it, any kind of Texas rig or punching rig plastics, and getting them down on the deep weed edges can really result uh, in some really good bites as well. But there's a place for both, and I just tell a person, wherever your strength is, fish to that. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fish to my strength, hopefully, this weekend, as Sam and I um, are heading up to fish the Northern Bassmaster Open up on, on uh, Tomahawk and Minocqua chain. Uh, we've done well in that tournament and in the few times that we've fished it. I think I've fished it twice and taken a second and four. So I'm really looking forward to that. That would be uh, that'd be a cool deal to uh, to put a W up before I start shifting my focus over to hunting, which I've done already because it's food plot time. Uh, here we are in the middle of July. Now is a really good time to start thinking about putting in fall plots. For those of you who haven't done a lot of food plotting in the past, it's not as intimidating as it needs to be. Everybody at every level can have some food plot success. As long as you've got a spray bottle of Roundup in a, in a metal tine rake and some seed, there's a lot of products out there, throw and grows and stuff like that, that are really, really good for putting in these little kill plots. If you're doing a more larger agricultural piece, now is a great time to go in and prep your soil. Something that I'm trying to do right now, but uh, my tractor is... Out of service. I was going and mowing my fields, getting ready to spray. My plan is to put in this G2 product called Greenfields Plus. It's a combination of, of rye and, and clovers and rape. And then I also put in a lot of daikon radishes and turnips. Now's getting to be the time for that. The other thing I still want to put in is soybeans. Now, I know a lot of people like to put their soybeans in earlier in the year, but this year I'm going to try testing it out because I found that when you plant a soybean later, It'll stay green longer, and that'll make it a little bit better for that early season bow hunt. Because any agricultural planted soybeans generally only last one to two weeks maximum into the deer season before they turn yellow and those deer turn away from them. I'll still have a great late season crop, even though I'm planting them late. But that is my goal, is to, to try to do the soybean thing if I get my tractor running. Um, aside from that, uh, the only other thing that I'm going to touch on as fall hunting is coming up. Um, there's there's a lot of new products. And for us, one of the things that I really focus on uh, is um, our Western hunt. Uh, Brian Gates and I are doing a DIY um, Wyoming uh, mule deer hunt this year. Try to get one like this one right here um, in a very similar proximity area. And when it comes down to prepping for a hunt like that, 
using the avenues and tools that are out there now to do as much e-scouting and prepping as we can goes a long ways when you get out there to go and do that. So the hunt really does start now. It comes down to map study is a huge, huge part of it. And what we're looking to do is try to get back to pieces that may otherwise be difficult to get to unless you're looking at the Onyx maps or, or the products from uh, like Hunt and Fool and trying to find those you know difficult little access to get into the little hidden gems. Uh, we're planning on using fat tire bikes this year to try to get back further because there's a lot of places where you can't use ATV or a truck on public land. And that's exactly what we're focusing on is just trying to find a deer that hasn't been bothered enough so much that he has the opportunity to get older. Um, and with that comes, you know, a, a lot of physical demands. And uh, if you live in Wisconsin, it's really tough to stay fit all the time because we've got um, a lot of ground meat molded into very different shapes and, and flavors like bacon and snack sticks. And uh, we have a, obviously cheese curds and cheese and we have brats and we have uh, malted beverages and all these other things that are just too good to say no to sometimes. But at the end of the day, if you're going to go out and do a Western hunt, you know, doing things to try to get yourself fit is a good thing to do right now. Uh, my wife and I have been doing a lot of hiking and biking and running like we've talked about. And, and I'm no pillar of health, but the time I put in now is going to make that hunt a lot more enjoyable. Uh, once we get out there, I'm going to start getting back into some of those white uh, wilderness athlete products. Their uh, 28 day challenge is a great weight loss program. But not just that, um, I've been really starting to listen to uh, a lot of the podcasts by Brian Call, uh, Gritty, Gritty Bowman. Uh, that guy rocks, just normal everyday guy, but he, he cares about what he does and he invests in what he does on every different level. And, and why I say he's just a regular guy is because nothing he does is anything that we can't do. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, is taking the time to invest into e-scouting and to uh, equipping yourself and then taking your health seriously so that you can get out there and hunt. And once you get out there, I think one of the things that, that Brian does really well from what I've seen is that he's not so concerned about what happens. And what I mean by that is so often our anxiety gets in the way of our success, our stress, our uncertainty, our doubt, all that stuff. And I think ultimately at the end of the day, the best thing you can do is have a positive attitude and a strong work ethic and get out there and just hammer, you know, just, just hammer, figure it out. You know, if someone's on your spot, fine, move to the next spot. Someone's on that spot, fine, move to the next spot. Like you just keep grinding. And it's no different than fishing, hunting. It's all the same stuff. You go out there with a positive attitude and you grind really, really hard. Those are the guys who day in and day out find the greatest success. Hey, I love this little time that we've had to get together and talk about things. I'm going to be more topical moving forward, not only with our guests, but here's the things that we're going to be talking about moving forward. We're going to be talking about bow preparation, bow tuning, bow setup, and how I rig my bow specifically. I'm going to bring it onto the camera so you guys can all see what we're doing. Um, and if again, if you're listening to us on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, feel free to start jumping over and subscribing to our YouTube channel so that we can show you some of the gear and uh, and tackle as we're as we're talking about it. But I'm going to break my my bow package down for this year. I'm going to show you everything I've got on it and why. The other thing we're going to do is we've got some guests coming on. I'm um, really excited about that. I uh, just spent uh, the day on the water with uh, Tom Keenan, uh, who is the um, number one money winner in walleye tournament history. Uh, the first guy to break the million dollar mark. Uh, he is a, a phenomenally accomplished angler uh, at every level of walleye fishing. And we talked to him and he was interested in coming on. Um, the guy's had a lot of experience with his time at Gander Mountain working for Evinrude and obviously uh, as a professional fisherman. And he's got some really great hunting stories too. The guy's killed a lot of megas. Um, but uh, in addition to that, uh, we also welcome at any time your suggestions for what you guys would like to hear about um, probably bring Cody Hayner on uh, BASS Open Pro and uh, some of my other friends. So a lot coming on. Um, really looking forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you so much. And hopefully if everything goes right, next week we'll be on the new digs. We'll have everything set up. So, hey, God bless you. Good luck on the water, in the field, and keep on hunting and fishing and 
keep keep going. Just do stuff. Just do it.